How about this for a new attack vector? Medical imaging. Secure Ninja. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia Webb. We caught up with Zev Glosman again at RSA to get an update on the TCP dump vulnerabilities that we spoke with him about at Cybertech in Israel. And though he wasn't ready to give us more info on those, he did talk to our director, John Miller, about some interesting research that he's been doing on medical imaging formats. That's right, he's figured out how to hack ultrasounds and MRIs. We'll let Zev explain. So we're gonna talk about an unusual InfoSec topic. Um, we're going to talk about the healthcare vectors that sort of uh, fall outside the normal uh, IT, right? So we're going to talk about protocols and things that are very specific to healthcare and that are actually not used anywhere else. Um, how they interact together and sort of um, what, the, uh, what makes the system work. So um, DICOM, right? DICOM, so there are two predominant standards in healthcare that are used. One of them is called DICOM, one of them is called this HL7. Today we're going to talk about the DICOM and we're going to talk about how uh, the vectors that are introduced with complex data structures that are unencrypted and unauthenticated and how they're transferred. So and then I'll just share a little bit with uh, what's the, you know, what's kind of the state of the union. So how many uh, people have IP addresses, you know, that are publicly accessible running these protocols and, you know, so what some of the risks might be. So, uh, DICOM is a complex medical imaging standard. Um, DICOM study, which is uh, the units in which uh, examinations are sort of united, consists of several components. Um, it consists of images and then kind of a virtual series dash slash uh, study um, um, unification. So, a DICOM image, right, a DICOM file consists of uh, headers and consists of image payload. Um, the headers are defined by the type of modality and they will change, for example, from CT to MR to X-ray to ultrasound, so they're different uh, because like CT has slice thickness, which let's say ultrasound does it and so forth and so on. Um, however, this data is all is transferred, so, so the first step is that an image or a study is acquired by a modality. Then that image is transmitted from the digital modality uh, essentially in unencrypted format to a distribution system of some kind. Those systems are typically called PAC servers. So those PAC servers are installed in hospitals, they have lots of storage, uh, storage attached to them, and they are the master keepers of these images. So then physicians, and there are different types of physicians, such as radiologists and referring physicians, will be accessing this data um, uh, from web-based viewers and also thick client viewers um, to, to view the examination. So, and, uh, so what's the problem, right? Where is the risk, where is the threat? So these images are very complex in terms of the data structure. Um, and the code that reads them is bad. So the code that reads them is majority of that. There is uh, three or four uh, kind of really popular libraries on the market. So Merge Film, DCMTK, which is a open source one and a couple of others. Uh, some, some companies have written their own. But what makes this vector very, very interesting is a lot of this uh, data transfer happens in patient CDs. So, you know, what's the workflow? So you go to a, to a radiology practice to get a scan done. They give you a CD. So then you go to your referring to this physician, you give that CD back to the system, they scan it. So uh, for my research, right, that the, my research has been focused on, you know, a couple of the kind of the most popular toolkits. Um, now there are ways to do remote code execution on the scanner, on the hospital pack server, and uh, on the physician workstation. So you almost, as a hacker, you have a pick which angle of that you want to attack. And uh, if this data is transmitted in unencrypted and unauthenticated fashion, then potentially you know an attacker could pose as a patient and bring it into the system, and that you know that's really a terrible vector. Um, in, in healthcare, systems are air gaps, so that means they're not internet accessible. But if you can break through the air gap, then that opens a lot of interesting possibilities, you know, for an attacker, what to do. Um, how are you doing this? What's that? So how are you doing it? Can you diagram? Yeah. So, so let's 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 tell a story. So you, the patient, you go to a machine. Okay. The machine outputs diacoms. These diacoms go to the hospital or uh, hospital. 
that where this was generated and potentially go to to a CD. Okay, let's make it round. That's a patient CD. So now you take this patient CD, you alter the payload. Okay, you put your malicious payload inside. You go to another hospital which just happens to be your target with your malicious, uh, you know, let's put a cross here, you know, on the top, there's a hospital. You go to another hospital, the CD hits in. So what are they gonna do? It's gonna go to reception, and then they're gonna either bring it to a physician workstation, or they're gonna scan it and import it into the packs. Where the doctor, using a custom software is going to view it so so what as an attacker you can ha you can basically crash it here 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 or in front of the or, or on the doctor computer you know quite an interesting vector so so you know this is and so what's the mitigation right so what's the mitigation of this risk Make sure that DICOM is not transferred over open channels, right? IPsec, TLS, whatever it is you do, do something authenticated. Two, import of these images into the facility. You know, there are no known exploits of this kind, right? So there are no antiviruses, and your typical stuff is just not gonna be able to pick it up. So isolate the remote, isolate the foreign image viewing environments. Make sure that those boxes are all not on the network. Do not bring those images in, right? Because there are threats lurking in this data, or at least potential threats lurking in this data. But uh, for my research, it shows that it's actually very possible and doable. Okay, so my other question is, why were you interested in researching this? Like, what, what is your, what's the end uh, reason no, so you know, my belief, right, is because it, uh, you know, so my belief is that because of the presence of this, uh, you know, kind of multiple vectors in healthcare, healthcare actually cannot become more efficient and deploy technology. So, you know, I think that the way that, you know, I think that the way we make something safe and trusted is we test it, right? And we find problems and we, fi and we fix the problem. Now, this process, you know, at times may be difficult and, you know, may cost some people some jobs and so forth. But ultimately, right, that's the only way how to make a system safe, is to find those problems, expose those problems, and fix them. As a hacker and as a security researcher, are you just always interested in these sort of little known um, attack vectors? Well, so, you know, as a security researcher, you know, how does a researcher get famous, right? So, you know, if, if you call yourself a researcher, you know, there is a claim for fame here, right? I want to, you know, I don't want to make small points. I want to make big ones. So, you know, I'm trying to go to vectors and, uh, and venues which haven't been tested and scrutinized by others because perhaps they didn't know how it worked. Uh, my previous company worked in this space, so I understand the data flow and the workflow very well. And so, you know, I'm sort of combining, you know, the two skill sets and saying, hey guys, there is a problem here and, you know, what are all the possible ways to make it safe? Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this episode, give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment below letting us know what you thought about it. Be sure to subscribe to Secure Ninja TV for lots more cybersecurity content and coverage at conferences around the world. I'm Alicia Webb. Bye.